What is going on my Modus and welcome back to another video. If it's your first time on the channel and you've never heard of Modism before, Modism is the worldwide community and lifestyle of modding vehicles. Of course, if you want to learn more about us and represent us to the world, be sure to go to modism.com, link in the description below. Anyways, folks, let's jump right into it. So today is a very exciting day because we are finally, finally, finally starting to mod the skyline. And no, I'm not just talking about a little window trim or cable removal. We are slapping some actual parts, AKA coilovers. Yes, you heard that correctly, folks. We're gonna be slapping on some ISR coilovers to slam the car for the meet this weekend. And on top of that, we're gonna be tossing on some new wheels that I actually picked up yesterday, but I haven't revealed them yet. So before we get started, grab your popcorn, grab your blanket, grab your seat, get ready for a good show. If you guys remember last time, we tossed on a Modism flight tag onto the Skyline keys. And since the last time, I've also tossed on this little R35 GTR steering wheel keychain. I got this in my last visit to Japan, which interestingly enough, isn't when I bought the car. But that is where I saw the listing for the car. We got Old Faithful parked up over there in the Skyline, just chilling in the corner. But as you can see, we have the fronts on ramps and the rears are already on jack stands. But I tossed on the new wheels because I wanted to test fit our Buddy Club P1s. These wheels are pretty cool because they're actually discontinued and um, they do have a lot of racing heritage, which is legit, but my favorite part is these little dice valve stem caps. Of course, one of the main reasons why I bought these wheels, new tires. So yeah, let's go ahead and pop these wheels off and get the rears installed. I am very interested to see how all of this fits because the rears are 18 by nine, sorry, not 18, 17 by nine plus 27 and then the fronts are 17 by 8 plus 22. So this is my first time running a staggered setup. Hopefully everything lines up just nice. We are going to be tossing on some R32 GTR fenders, so hopefully that does something. <laughs> Over here we have the ISR coilovers that we showcased last time. Of course this time we will be slapping them on the car. Really excited for this. Oh my god. They kind of heavy, not gonna lie. So here's a look at the suspension components with the wheel removed. As you can see, the control arm, the bushings, everything underneath is absolutely crusty. Let's see if we could take a look at the actual bushing from the strut. Yeah, it might be really hard to see, but the actual bushings are like next to none. That is insane. Yeah, this definitely needs a refresh. If I'm reading this correctly, and hopefully I am, looks like we only need to remove this bottom bolt and the ones holding in the top hat, and it should drop down. Oh, nice. My ears are ringing. Oh, yuck. Right, I might have to jack this up. Okay, I lied, that just came off extremely easily. Nice. I've never even seen this part of the car before, but check this out. Look, they have a top hat cover, and look how clean that looks. Damn, the attention to detail is something else. So we got everything disconnected. It should, should fall out. Apologies, it was done off video, but if you ever find your guys stuck in the same place that I was just at, I literally just unbolted the three bolts that are holding up the strut, and then uh, I had to kind of like pry and hammer this piece off of this bolt right here. And once that came off of the bolt, this whole thing just fell down. And took some pieces of rust with it. <laughs> but nice, fresh right out. So here we have our ISR coilover. This one is for the rears, I double checked. One way you can easily double check if there's no markings on there is just grab the OEM one, look how far apart the two studs and nuts are. But of course, just a brief overview of the coilover, we have these three locking collars. The top two are for preload and the bottom one is for height adjustment. And with these coilovers, they did provide us with two spanner wrenches, which is great because my D2 coilovers, I bought them on Facebook Marketplace, never came with any, so I had to use a hammer and a chisel. All right, now that we got the top two locking collars done, I am gonna go ahead and turn it all the way to the full stiffness. I've never even felt the ride quality of these before, but I am assuming that I'm gonna be driving this car a bit harder, so let's... Nice. Take off your brand new hardware. All right, and for the height, I am going to install it on the car first and then do all of that. Because we're gonna have to toss the wheels on a couple of times just to see if everything fits. But yeah, without further ado. Why is it not twisting anymore? Is that the max? No way, I guess that was the max. 
Holy cow. Alright, well, I'll just toss them on the car like this and see how they are. And then I'll measure the threads after. So don't worry. You really just eyeballed it well? Yeah, of course I did. I never know which way to put the logo, so I just got it facing backwards. And now with the jack, we're gonna go ahead and raise this whole system up until the coilovers go past those holes. As you can see, we got them up in there. Time to close the gap. Oh, that's so satisfying. Then you wanna slap these bad boys on so it doesn't drop and hit you in the head. Oh, if I drop this back here, I'm screwed. Nice. Got everything tightened up, no loosey-goosey. But now we can stick this little cover back on. So I just tried doing a quick test fit. Man, that is way too low right now. Look how high up the rotor is sitting without it even being on the ground. So yeah, I'm gonna go drop it by like two, three inches. So we got the first wheel on right here. Dude, it's not even sitting on the ground, so we're a bit worried that it might crunch the fenders. Give me some bacon fenders when we put this down, but... Yeah! Damn. Yeah, so we just got the other side removed. This took like less than five minutes. Look at Dylan taking care of the new one right there. Yeah, also do it. Can you uh, adjust the stiffness all the way to the max out? Oh, yes, of course. Thanks, boy. <laughs> but yeah, this one over here, pretty promising. Um, I think we might take off the wheel one more time before we lower the car so we can match up both sides exactly but yeah so we just got the passenger side and the driver's side on it's looking absolutely nice but now we're gonna go ahead jack it down and see if we need to make any adjustments all right oh my god oh she low. my god it's still going Whoa! Oh, that looks so much better. Dude! So this, is much a, better. this is a R32 now, no yes. doubt. Before I was like, yeah, maybe this could be an Ultima Coupe. Damn. This That's Nissan Sentra is crazy. Right? They don't make them like they used to. Y'all, God has favorites, man. Look at this. One bolt, and then the top hat bolts. That's it. This whole thing comes out. That is so convenient. Just like that, the front and driver's side is out. Yeah, different tires. All right, so as you can see, we got the front installed. Just need to knock out the other side, but it's, dang, that shit looking nice. All right, man, moment of truth. No way. <laughs> we gotta go lower, bro. <laughs> we gotta go lower. <laughs> so as you can see, we ended up adjusting the front coilovers. This gap used to be like this much amount of thread and now it's reduced to this little tiny sliver of thread. Yeah, the reason why that happened is because in the rears I left about uh, like four inches of thread and I matched the fronts, but fronts, rears are different and I just found out today. So yeah, my mistake. Right, y'all. Moment of truth. For real this time. Oh my god. Hey. Hey, that's not bad. Dude. Freaking spit, bro. Again, we did turn up the coils to the max stiffness, so hopefully this is like not gonna be an issue, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with how everything went. Let's go take it for a spin. We whip in the 32 right now, literally just left the house. So far, no rubbing, no, no clicks and clacks, no weird noises, so I would say pretty successful. Dang. Let me just say right now, compared to the stock suspension, the ride quality is way smoother. 
And again, we did turn up the coils to max stiffness, but even at max stiffness, it's really nothing crazy. I enjoy this little tight-knit race car feel. So yeah, pretty successful. And of course, do not forget that these are brand new coils. So they will still settle in for the next couple of days. And maybe next time around when I film it, it'll be a bit lower. But I'm really satisfied with this current ride height. It's pretty low, like lower than my Civic, but it's not too low to the point where it's just impractical, you know? This is an R32, it is a piece of history. I do not want to damage it the same way I damaged my Civic with my recklessness, so this time around things will be different. But of course that also means I could now finally get a alignment and I don't have to keep steering all crooked like this anymore. Okay, so after driving it for a little bit more, I did notice that the driver's side does rub a little bit. I'm not entirely sure if rolling my fenders will resolve that problem or if I just gotta like raise it up a little bit, but yeah. Also, as you can hear, the car literally just died. Oh my god. Yeah, so I gotta go get that checked out by Mario. Because I do have low compression, which is not good. And I got to drive this car long distances. So, still in the process of bulletproofing it, but other than that, I'm getting closer and closer. But in other great news, we are now headed to the shop to go get an alignment. But first, we gotta stop by the post office because some lovely people, aka you guys, ordered some merch. But yes, we are finally getting an alignment. So I no longer have to steer all crooked like this. This is, here, check this out. This is straight. But yeah, we're gonna get that fixed, and once that's done, we're gonna look for a new steering wheel, because this one is absolutely torn and just, it's really old and cracked. Guys, I still cannot get over the fact that this is an inline six two liter. Legit, same size, in theory, as the Type R engine, but it sounds pretty good. Woo! Just pulled up to the shop, time to get this alignment done. So we are inside the shop right now, as you can see, got mats. LS Swapped RX7. This is for sale. So if you guys want to inquire about that, be sure to message the shop. But this looks like a forward Raptor, I think. Really nice truck. Super sick. EG bumper, I think. Yeah, that's mint. Right now they got the 32 on the alignment machine. Dude, this car looks so good now that it's just lowered with wheels. But over here, we have a R32 GTR. This one is also for sale. Um, I believe last time I checked the asking price was 50000 but it is Cali legal. So that is really, really rare to find. Absolutely mint interior. Who knows, maybe in a couple years if this car is still here, I'm gonna buy it. And of course, the big, beefy RB26 with a little Nismo oil cap. That's pretty cool. Man, this is the real deal. And then we got me right there. So over here underneath the car, got Mike heating up the tie rod. Shout out to Mike, hello children. And because the GDSTs have rear steering, like a slight rear steering, you also need to do an alignment on those depending on if your system is still active. I have no idea, but it's best to just check everything out while we're here, you know? Here are the results right now. As you can see, this thing definitely needed that alignment. Man, this thing is sitting nice. Here she goes. The car is all done now. We should have a straight steering wheel. Inside the car right now, y'all, that is a straight steering wheel. It's so funny that the norm is what amazes me. Now that the alignment is all taken care of, there's one more thing we need to address. And of course, that is this piece of fabric just dangling off. So to fix that, I'm gonna super glue it. As you guys can see, I have a little bit of super glue on there. I'm trying not to apply a lot because if it dries and soaks through, it's gonna be really hard. And you don't want your skin to be brushing up against that. So yeah, we're just gonna be doing little dots all around this. So we got everything smooth and tucked. It's not perfect, but it looks a whole lot better, especially compared to before when it was just dangling. Yeah, piece by piece. All right, folks, it's a new day. And today we will be washing the R32 for the very first time in years. Yes, you heard that correctly, in years. This car is imported from Yokohama back in 2022. And when the seller had it, it just sat. Then when I went to go buy the car the night before, he rinsed it off. And since then, it's just been sitting. But today we'll be giving it a proper wash, inside and out. Cause I'm not gonna lie, it really needs it. You ready, man? Give me five. Oh, you missed. Hey, hey. You know, in all honesty, this car is not even that dirty.
Wow, that looks so cool. And the results are gonna be insane. Can't wait to slap a banner on here. About to look sick. So there's one product I absolutely recommend. It's this Apex drying towel. Look, this panel is wet. It takes one swipe and it dries the whole thing. Insane. Just like that, folks, the Elegy Retro is all cleaned up. This is a really crazy sight because this is the first time the car has been deep cleaned in, I would say, maybe like a year and a half, two years. But yeah, for a 34-year-old car, the paint condition is in pretty good state. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a respray at some point, but yeah, I have no complaints at all. I absolutely love this car, despite all those mishaps in the very beginning. It's all coming together. So next up, we gotta refresh that tint and slap on a modism banner. Bam, so now check out that mock-up. I did not think I would be ever putting a banner on an R32, let alone mine. This is crazy. Anyway, let's do it. Got our first piece down. There's no going back, y'all. Only at the halfway point right now, but I cannot get over how good this looks. Mud. Oh yeah, mud. Putting the finishing touches on here, you know what I'm saying. Oh. Oh man, this could be crazy. Ooh, I'm too hyped. Man. Wow, that is beautiful. Black white combo. Almost there. Almost there. Three, two, one. Bang! Check that out. It is now officially the Modism R32. Yes. That looks so sick. Lordy Lord. Nice and even. Centered. You know it, man. Sheesh. Now we got the R32 and the Skyline. Not the Skyline, the Civic Twinning. For my OG supporters, we made it, y'all. We're in the process. This is something that I used to dream about all the time in high school. And now, we don't just have one, but we have two of my dream cars. And they're both rocking modism. How amazing is that? Thank you, guys. Well, folks, good news and bad news. So, you know, we got the Skyline ready for the car meet. Literally dropped it on coils, put some new wheels on, washed it up, bandaged it up. Well, the day before I was supposed to go out to the meet, the clutch slave cylinder blew. Luckily I was able to get it home just by topping it off, but the second I got home right in front of my driveway, the whole thing just blew open and I couldn't even top it off to get pressure. And since then, it's just been sitting in the front yard. I'll admit in a very, very sexy manner. Here are the clutch slave cylinders that we're gonna run. One belongs to a 240SX and the other belongs to a 300ZX. My plan is to remove the OEM one and compare between these two to see which one it looks closer to. And also it's gonna be a really, really messy job, so I assume I'm gonna be filming this part in little segments. But don't worry, I will update you. May or may not be able to see right there, that is the clutch slave cylinder. So I'm trying to believe the system right now, but check this out. Literally doesn't even pop back up, so I just gotta keep pulling it up with my hand and then kicking it down. So we just wrestled out the original slave cylinder. I'm pretty sure this is factory, because check that out. Nissan Japan, but yeah. Hardest part about this was removing the tube, because the flare nut that they have on there is really old and all malleable, so I had to just wrestle it off. But luckily it's out, now I can replace it. So now we have the two side by side, original and the refresh. I could be tripping, but this refresh looks a little bit bigger. It is after all from a different car, so I'm very surprised that they are similar overall. But the reason why this original one failed is because these seals right here are so old and shot that they don't even hold in the fluids. So yeah, a refresh is definitely needed. Anyway, let's get to it. As you can see, we now have the shiny new one in place all buttoned up. So we just finished up the bleeding process. As you can see, we now have pressure back in our clutch. Let's go. And yes, I can change gears. But while I've been doing the testing over here, my car actually shut off by itself. So that indicates there is another problem with this car. Could be the idle air valve, could be something else that I don't know about, but hopefully it's not an expensive or a difficult fix. Now that we have the Skyline back up and running, I'm gonna be heading over to San Francisco. There I'll meet up with the homeboy Elias, cause today we'll be swapping cars. He has this really dope S2000, I'm super excited cause I've never driven an S2000 before. And on top of that, he's never driven a Skyline before, so I'm gonna let him drive the R32. Overall, I think this will be a great experience and I'm really looking forward to it. See y'all there. Finally got to see the S2000 in person, always oh, for the focus. But yeah, last time I saw him, he was still whipping that chalk gray E30. BMO, you will be missed. But hey, I'm glad to hear that he's loving this S2K way more. 
man. Oh, snap with the oh. driver's seat, bro. I'll chill to the back right oh. now. Yeah, this is chill, man. Is this your first time driving a right hand? This is my first time driving a right hand drive car, oh, like snap. not on the Sam. Okay, so okay. I just want to make sure I'm in the right gear. You're good, man. Take your time. Oh, my God. Ain't nothing to it. Wow, this is so cool. <laughs> so true. This is so cool. And then we got the Golden Gate Bridge right there, y'all. Whoa. Oh, damn, that's a big old pothole. I know, no. I, was like, <laughs> I did not see that on the way in. This is crazy. And then after this, you're gonna let me know if you like right hand or left hand more. All right, I got you. Oh, man, this is. <laughs> I'm like tripping out because, like, because, like, it's just like, what? Well, it must be crazy for you because it feels like a self-driving car, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's never been in a right-hand drive car, so... I'm still getting used to uh, the whole kilometers thing, too. So oh, some, that's right. Yeah, yeah so I'm like, say, yeah. shoot. How fast do you know? I you think 40 is like 28 or something like that. It's really weird. Oh, man. I'm thinking about going louder exhaust. What do you think? I think I think you could. I think you could. I don't know what exhaust is on here right now. Yeah, I think it's a Nismo one, so it's like it's pretty, oh, okay. uh, it's pretty like, factory oh, yeah. quiet, a little yeah. loud. But I don't know, man. That to I, that Tome is calling my name. I love a good Tome. <laughs> As, you know, Mercy Thousand. I have a Jay's Racing, so That's that tells awesome, you what man. I think about about noise. Heck yeah. I mean, I think I think she enjoys it. She she likes it. That's good. Not a lot of drone. Not a lot of drone unless you unless you get off of it. Ah, I see. Where are we okay. Do I go straight? Uh, I, go. I would make a left. Thank you. <laughs> Even my car. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's his. It's you a can. it's a rental for the day. <laughs> oh, I already stopped. You're it. chilling. You're chilling, bro. <laughs> Didn't see oh, there we go. We're there good, we go. We're there good. we go. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Oh man, it's so different than the S2000. The S2000 is so forgiving. Like even if you take the foot off the clutch, like the car will like roll and it's almost like impossible to stall. Does it have a clutch delay belt? It does have a clutch delay oh, belt. Oh nice, nice. And so I think I think that's what, what really helps. Oh yeah. Um, but it does make the shifting a millisecond, you know, like slow. Yeah. Like, it's not the instant. Like, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the way my Civic drives, but yeah. this one is just way more mechanical. Yeah, and so, like, the E30 was that way, too. Like, I would just do it, and it would go right away. Heck, yeah. And, like, the, the SI and the old, I, I the, the 22 SI mm -hmm. had the clutch delay valve, too, so it wouldn't go automatically. And I'd be like, am I shifting wrong? And then you have to get used to shifting with it. Yeah. You go back to a car where it doesn't have one, then your shifting's all messed up. Oh, I feel you. Do you miss the SI? I do, I do, but I don't miss how it just randomly broke one day. Wait, really? Yeah, it randomly broke one day. One day. Oh, oh, oh. you're chilling, you're chilling. Sorry, you got it, you got it. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention we have an upgraded race clutch. <laughs> oh, okay. that's, yeah, that's why it's all. Okay. Okay. It's super sensitive. That makes sense now. Dude, this is this is so sick. Yeah, I'm fun. This is so sick. <laughs> I'm not even going fast, and I'm like, this is sick. I, I love this car because it's my cruise car. Like the Civic, that's my race car. But okay. with this one, because I can't shift fast, I'm like, yeah, this will just be my cruise car. Oh, uh, wait, wait until you, until you get there. Oh man, I'm so hyped for that. Like, Feedback. Wait, where's the? Oh, it's on oh, this yeah, side. Oh yeah, it's on the right side. Oh, that tripped me out. So sometimes, like, uh, I think around like 120 or 130 kilometers, you'll uh -huh. hear the uh, speed chime. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was oh, like, I mean, what? Yeah, I was like, is that my keys jingling? <laughs> yeah, but I was like, oh no, that's the car. Oh my god. That's so sick. All right, y'all. It is now time to whip the S2K. Oh. Hey, he's checking out the skyline right now, but. Here's the interior, the very famous S2000 gauge cluster. Yo, this is crazy, man. Twist it, and then all the way. Yep, like you're going to start it, and then now you can just press it. Hold it, yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, this is like a, damn, this is a legit race car, man. Snap! Clutch intercooler, but just missing the tune. Yes, I love you, car, bro. Uh, thank you nice. so much. What's your name, dog? Hori, I'm Chris, nice to, nice meet, to meet, you. meet you. You have a you? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you got this. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, first try. Let's go. <laughs> Drive it, it like you on a ring. Yep. <laughs> and it pulls all the way. Pulls all the way to eight thousand. You can pull. VTEC kicks in at about five grand. Five grand. Wow. Five grand. Dude, I love the sound quality on here. 
70 RR, man. Shifter is really smooth. Yep. Dude. It's a little go kart. I know, bro, with the tiny steering wheel, too. <laughs> oh, man, that's the cake. That's the icing on the cake. This is this is real, real Honda right For here. Real. I've never experienced real Honda. I've never experienced uh, actual VTEC besides my Honda Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this will be some, something new, something new. Be perfect. Let's get some first, first initial thoughts, Chris. I love this car, man. I'm gonna own one someday. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't stall, bro. This is gonna be embarrassing. Bro, just do it. Just gas it. Uh. Okay, just gas it. Just throttle response is on point, man. Yep. It's drive by wire instead of throttle cable. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I like it. I love it, man. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, you don't even know the half of it yet. You 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 didn't even touch VTEC yet. That was, that You'll was hear like it. 4500. Yeah, there, bro. You'll hear it. You're gonna hear it. Damn, that's just hella responsive. Ooh, it just keeps shit. going. That shit pulls. I think I think you only that. hit six thousand too. There was still another two thousand for you to go. Oh, no, dude. no, don't worry. I'm not, no, I'm no, not do, it. do it, do it, do it, do it. I'm giving you permission. Do it. This is crazy, hey, man. If you gave me permission, do I'm it. I give you permission. Man. It's punchy. Oh it's my super. God. The torque from the AP1 to this car is so much better because this is straight off the line. You'll punch through. Oh, okay. I think my cousin had an AP1. And yeah. Was saying that like, yeah, this car has no torque at all. Yeah. But this shit, like. Oh yeah, it's bro, torquey. You got me going like that, man. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. car sounds so good man I can't get over it yeah test pipe no no cats no nothing I don't want to floor it in a turn <laughs> oh yeah it, I'm, I'm it gets from, it, from yeah drive. it gets it gets a little squirrely sometimes but I've never accidentally slid yet really? so yeah Damn. and I mean I'm going pretty fast so That's okay, that's okay. You gotta get one, you gotta get one revved out. Bum, 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 bum. Trust me, you do it, and it's so, it's so, so worth it. All right, here we go. I trust you, I'll do it first. Yeah. Oh my god, man, this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. I got lights in the driver's seat, you know what I'm saying? There we go. Yes, sir. Oh, this feels so different from your clutch. I'm like pushing in, really? I'm going straight to the floor, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this car definitely drives like a Honda, man. The, this, I don't even know how to explain it, but this car is perfect. That doesn't get old, huh? Never. <laughs> Never. I do it in tunnels and tunnels, it's insane. That's awesome, man. Oh, you good, you good, you good? <laughs> do you have plans to go supercharged in the future? I thought about it. I only say no because um, I want to keep it NA because yeah, this that's thing the way NA that rips. Yeah, that's the way the Honda made it, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. And supercharging is cool, but like, it's better to me, in my opinion, to have NA because it's so reliable. And I mean, like, mad responsive. Yeah, and like that's that's all I really want. I want to squeak as much power as I can out of this car. Heck yeah! And once that's done. I want to make it look good. After that, I'm done. I'll buy another car to go really fast. Ah, snap. BMW? Yeah. Another BMW? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> depends. It depends on depends on what the lady says. Would you so go we'll G see. or F? Oh, G. Ah, G all the yeah. way. G all the way. My buddy had it 
G80. Um, I drove that thing, and I mean, I never, I never, I never came down from Cloud Nine. Bro, those full bolts on E85s, man, that shit's crazy. Yeah, and they're downpipe tune. Yep. So basically, that's basically all you the need, man. Be like a Supra. <laughs> downpipe tune. That's all you need. Like four, four sixty to the wheel right there. And those cars right, should be ex- coming up over okay. here. And those cars X drive. Oh my God, all wheel drive. They dousing everybody i hear they get some really nice x-drive tunes oh yeah no and, and and even the transmission tunes for them are really really good too that was the first time i had ever heard about a car getting a transmission tune i'm like damn oh, the BMW? I'm, yeah, yeah i'm like dude that's them. badass man you need them so they go no, 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 no. just finished up meeting with elias and driving the s2k but man check out how smooth the skyline is ripping now Woo! oh bottles this is so sick. Absolutely love this car. Well guys, we are back home now. And that was a very, very eventful experience to say the least. So like I said earlier, that was my very first time driving an S2000. In all honesty, I just gotta say, it is a great, great car. So huge shout out to Elias for letting me drive this S2000 and shout out to him for driving the Skyline with no fear. But anyways, folks, that is effectively gonna bring us to the end of today's video. I know, pretty interesting. It's the first time I'm shooting an outro outside. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, whether it was the install of the coilovers and the wheels, or watching me drive an S2000. The Skyline has been down for a bit of time, which is why you haven't really seen content on YouTube about it. But now that you are watching the wheel reveal in this video, I can finally post more on TikTok and Instagram. Now, real talks, guys. The next time you see me, it'll probably be at the Fitment event, which I literally got this car all built and ready to go. I say built, but I literally just lowered it on coils and did some maintenance things, nothing crazy. But yes, for the first time, we will not be bringing the Civic. We will be bringing the Skyline. I'm super excited for this event because it's hosted by Illus. If y'all know a thing or two about Illus, Illus is the brand that inspired Eliminate. So a lot of heavy hitters at this event. I don't even know why we got invited, but I'm very grateful that we did. Shout outs to Bay Euros for extending the invitation out to us. I'm super pumped for this. And I'm also really excited to see what you guys think of the new wheels and coilovers on the Skyline. Be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys enjoyed the vlog. But anyways, my modest, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll catch you guys soon.